Howdy, everybody, and welcome to the Texas High School Football Show, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Academy has all your high school football road trip needs this season. Get the right gear for the long season with free curbside pickup today at Academy Sports and Outdoors. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Texas High School Football Show as we roll along into mid-September. And uh, Toe is meeting Leather every Thursday and Friday night now. Jason Howe joining me, myself, Ryan Broninger, uh, for your weekly edition of the Texas High School Football Show. And, uh, I mean, we're kind of we're getting into district play. The non-district slate is uh, past us now, and we're starting to learn a little th- few things in Dallas and in Houston and maybe even the Hill Country where uh, we've said it a couple last couple of weeks, Jason, some of these Syntex teams are going to have very much their say-so come playoff time in determining a state champion. But uh, we'll start like we always do with uh, Jason Howell in Dallas and uh, where you were and what you liked and what you saw. I was uh, – I started it off Thursday night, Denton Geyer and uh, Lancaster there and uh, Battle of Undefeateds. Um, D- had a feeling Geyer was going to pull away uh, in this one, uh, just a little too much uh, for, for Lancaster. Uh, but Jackson Arnold, OU uh, quarterback commit, man, he showed he was a real deal. Um, looked really, really polished, threw the ball really well. Uh, 14 of 25, 300 yards, three touchdowns. Um, and really uh, just, you know, made quick work of, um, uh, of Lancaster. Uh, over the course of the night, but uh, I was there mainly to see uh, Peyton Bowen and uh, e- his brother Eli, and and then Lancaster's got a twenty-four cornerback Corian Gibson, uh, and you know the Bowen brothers, man, they they lock down their side of the field. Uh, quarterbacks know that they're they're they there's something bad could happen. It's very possible uh, if they uh, if they decide to. Uh, to look to their side of the field and uh they they handled business uh throughout much of the night uh but Peyton didn't get tested a whole lot uh, came up showed some real physicality against the run he had a body slam um picked up a personal foul you know a little exchange on the sideline uh so you know he he mixed it up a little bit and then he showed some you know some really nice bursts uh and uh you know, showed his explosive ability on, on the kickoff return. Um, but, uh, and then Eli had what looked like uh, a, another interception. I want to say it would have been his 10th and, you know, the last 10 games or something. He's on some kind of tear, uh, but it got wiped out by a penalty. Uh, but uh, he's just, uh, you know, just a unique uh, playmaker there at cornerback. And then Corey and Gibson, more of a, uh, a, uh, a, a played safety, but I, I like him more as a cornerback. He's playing safety uh, due to, uh, you know, reasons there, uh, the team needs there at uh, Lancaster, but uh, covered the slot, kind of that A.J. Johnson type, Antonio Johnson kind of role, uh, but uh, and a tough night for Lancaster. He was a bright spot. And then Friday night. Well, hold on, uh, does it, doesn't didn't Geyer have a big one this week? I was scrolling through Twitter. I think they got Prosper, maybe. Yeah, they do. They do. That's, that's another undefeated first, one. Yeah, that that'll be their first district matchup. Um, and uh, yeah, it's going to be a real physical ball game. Uh, that's one thing you can you can bet Prosper is going to do. Yeah, I feel like Prosper is one of the more underrated programs up there in the Metroplex. Like, don't get talked about enough. Like, not elite, well, but in definitely that, in they that play next in group. That district with Allen and Geyer, so they get overshadowed in district, mm-hmm. and they. Yeah, but they're always a fearful matchup for somebody in the first couple rounds of playoffs, and they're capable of making a big run. Uh, they play great defense, like I was saying. But, uh, yeah, uh, big uh, big matchup again for Geyer. But I'll be honest, I, I think Geyer is going to move to 4-0. Um, uh, but uh, they'll be tested uh, for sure this week. Well, I didn't mean to cut um, you off. Go ahead and go into your Friday. That's all right. <laughs> Friday I was at – Martin talking about a physical ball game. Martin and Allen, um, you know, Allen came in one and one, and uh, Martin two and zero. Oh, and I had a feeling. I, I've been talking about this Allen team. They're capable of really uh, flipping a switch and making a run. Um, they've, you know, and they they were able to slip past Martin, pull away for a twenty seven sixteen win, um, but uh, just. 
both teams really got after it. Um, and it was a it was a ball game deep into the fourth quarter. So uh, Javion Tobiano had not really tested. Again, a guy the quarterbacks really aren't going to throw his way too often. Uh, but uh, you know, looked the part of a top flight DB, Makai uh, Makai Senna, uh, and Zena Mosolo uh, went head to head a few times. So that was a good offensive line, you know, defensive line matchup there uh in that 24 class and you know there were some wins and losses on both sides but i thought both came out pretty respectably um and you know for the second week in a row saw senna really show that controlled um you know controlled and athletic you know ability there he plays with uh, a lot of patience and uh, i guess controlled dominance is what i was trying to go for there uh and then on the allen side of things Zena. Uh, really uh, had some nice flashes, showed some real violence off the edge. Uh, Davon Mitchell is a big-time 25 that uh, needs to be on everybody's radar. He's reeling in offers. He had two receptions, 54 yards, um, but uh, he's he's capable of some big plays. I got a feeling we're going to be talking about him as one of the uh, more complete uh, football players in that 25 class um, and uh, highly, highly – uh, regarded tight end, uh, one of the more highly regarded tight ends we've seen in a little bit. So, well, and that's a that's a 2025 class that we think is going to be extremely talented across the state of Texas. Absolutely. Uh, last Thursday, I started my week with a trip down to Wood Forest Bank Stadium in Shenandoah, and I saw the Woodlands take on Conroe Oak Ridge. Really a close game for the first half. The Woodlands starts pulling away. Mabry Metower, their 2024 quarterback, was really good on the night. His you know he just struggles with consistency throwing the ball. Uh, but if you mm-hmm. get him on the right night, he can be pretty dangerous, and he was. And uh, they got a really talented group of receivers with Patrick Rabel and then Quanell Farrakhan Jr. made the transfer over from Grand Oaks to the Woodlands this year. Uh, two touchdown receptions, one where he was just – he's got way more juice than you think. He had a kickoff return, mm. about 100 yards, uh, got called back. But I saw a lot out of him, like a lot that I hadn't seen in a camp setting – uh, in terms of like on field in play juice, uh, so he's going to be a really highly recruited kid in that 2025 class as well. But you know, kind of what the Woodlands does are enormous up front on the offensive line. They just wear you down. Uh, then Mebry Metire uses his legs uh, when he needs to, and, and made some really crucial third down uh, scrambles, but also some design runs to get him in the end zone. Uh, and just the Woodlands just eventually overwhelmed Conroe Oakridge there in the second half. But I really liked what I saw. Out of 2024 linebacker Justin Williams, I mean, I think the second play of the game, the Woodlands gets a guy loose on a wide receiver screen, and he's running down the sideline for a for sure touchdown. And Justin Williams just hawks him down out of nowhere. And and I, mm. if I were him, I would have that play number one on my highlight reel uh, after my junior year because it was super impressive for him to run down a receiver like that down the sideline. I thought he was an outstanding prospect. So uh, from there, I traveled down to Southeast Texas. Uh, hit some schools on Friday. Jasper went down to Port Arthur Memorial, who's I think up to number three now in the Class 5A Division mm-hmm. I rankings. And that was a team last week, Jason, on this show that I spoke about. Put a pin in Port Arthur Memorial, and the other one was AM yeah. Consolidated, just to kind of see what they were going to do. AM Consolidated got blown out by Lufkin. So, and, and Lufkin looks like they may, mm. be, may be on their way back. They, but Port talk Arthur, about a big matchup. Luf, Lufkin, I think, takes on Longview this weekend. Ah, that's, that'll be. That's East Texas, as as, yeah. as big as it comes out there. But Port Arthur Memorial uh, was off this past week, but they are loaded. I mean, they've got kids in the 25 and 26 class that their head coach, Brian Morgan, is convinced are going to be national-type recruits. And you go, you, know, you go back to the Danny Gores and the Jamal Charles, like those classes that they had come through there uh, in Port Arthur, pretty special group, and, and they're really looking forward to the future there. But – uh, currently number three in the Class 5A Division One rankings. And then Friday night, uh, watched Nederland take on Silsby at Lamar University in Beaumont. I thought it was going to be the first game I'd ever covered in my own stopping grounds of Nederland, but they're doing some stadium work, and it's not quite ready yet to host games. So uh, they played that game at Lamar, and there to see Draylon Miller, and he didn't disappoint. Third play of the game, takes a little inside tunnel screen, shakes two guys, runs through a tackle about 20 yards down the field and scores from – 65 yards out and then you know had a a few other catches throughout the game played safety I mean the kid is just a phenomenal athlete he is 
Yeah. You had to put him kind of in that football player mix when you start ranking these prospects. But mm. wherever you kind of envision him at the next level, it's hard to see him not being successful just because of the traits he's got. He could play running back. He could play receiver. He could play – I think he could play inside receiver. He could play safety. If he wants to get mm-hmm. bigger, he could play more toward the box in a linebacker role. Just an outstanding overall football player. And uh, he, he was great in the game and, and will be in College Station this weekend to see a and take on Miami, along with a lot of these kids that we've been talking about or are talking <laughs> about uh, this week in the last few weeks. So, Jason, in Dallas, any other scores really stand out or even across the state? Yeah, I got a few, man. Um, you know, it was it was good to see Alito kind of rebound with the big win over Justin Northwest. Um, I tell you what, that North Crowley uh, 28-20 win over Lucas Lovejoy. Yeah, that's big. Uh, to hold Lovejoy to 20 points is yeah. really hard to do. That, that that tells you how how special that Crowley defense can be. Uh, you know, that's a that's a team effort. Um, and, uh, yeah, they went in there and they, they handled some business for sure. So, uh, that's, uh, that's two losses now for Lovejoy. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, and I saw Byron Nelson 79 to 20 over, uh, over Denton Braswell and Denton Braswell is a program that's kind of on a rise out there. Uh, and they've put together, you know, a pretty good start to the year and, to have Byron Nelson come and and just lower the boom like that, uh, quarterback Jake Wilson, twenty nine of thirty three for four hundred and eighty five yards Gracious. and four touchdowns on the season, seventy three of ninety one for over a thousand yards, ten touchdowns, one interception. Seventy three of Jake 91? Wilson, yeah, seventy three of ninety one. That's pretty so, impressive. Yeah, I can't do that uh, completion percentage off the top of my head. <laughs> It's over. I think it's over eighty percent. So he's doing something. What class is he? Uh, uh, he's twenty three. Wow. So, wow. Yeah, uh, he's putting together some real good tape. I, I think some colleges are probably going to be pretty interested in. And Byron Nelson's got a talented team. Uh, they're they're in that district with uh, South Lake, and uh, so I got a feeling we're going to be hearing a lot more about Byron Nelson over the next uh, next few weeks. Well, in Houston, I was really looking forward to seeing what would happen with North Shore and Spring Westfield, having seen Spring Westfield just a week before. And Mm -hmm. uh, the North Shore machine has turned on, Jason. Uh, And it turned (laughs) on in week one with their blowout win over the Woodlands. And now in week three, they beat Spring Westfield by 30 points. I mean, just just when you think, like, for some reason, I think every year we may get in our brain, like, hey, you know, this may be the year to get North Shore. It, it ain't. It ain't. They're mm-hmm. rolling, and they're rolling right into that district schedule, which is going to be a really tough district schedule now uh, with the Tascacita and C.E. King, uh, Summer Creek. So some really tough matchups in there for North Shore. But with the way they're rolling right now, John Kay and company, like they're, uh, they got their eyes set back on Jerry World for the fourth year in a row. Another big one that stood out to me in, uh, in Greater Houston was Katie 14, Katie Tompkins 13. Now mm. – Katie has, I think they're now 85-2 and two in their last 87 home games. Uh, one of those two losses was to Katie Tompkins in the district a few years ago with Jalen Milrow yeah. as the quarterback there at Tompkins. Uh, and they nearly pulled it off again, a one-point win uh, for Katie. I thought that was super interesting considering that, uh, you know, Tompkins had been – they looked okay in their week one yeah. win against Cy Ranch, but they are clearly they're, – they're playing much better ball than they were there in that first week. And then – a small school, uh, small school score that stuck out. So all the way, I mentioned Jasper. They lose to Newton, and I thought that Ooh. was a game Jasper would would handle well. But uh, Newton, you want to go like pound for pound yeah. athlete over the course of the last ten years per town. It, Newton may be in oh. the top five. Uh, Newton's got some dudes. They're always talented. Yeah, uh, they're they're always fast, and they're. Uh, they're they're always going to be pretty well coached. You can count on that. All right. Well, where are you headed this week, Jason? I'm going to start things off on Thursday night out, and I'm going back out to Denton. Um, I'll be honest. I think this one may be a little bit of a uh, a short short ball game. Uh, but Denton Ryan versus Saginaw. Get to see uh, five star Anthony Hill. Um, and on Friday night, I'll be. 
I'll be in Waco for Waco Connolly China Spring. Well, you're headed south, and you're just. I am. I'm headed south, and uh, and on my way on my way to College Station for the weekend. Yep. Dropping in on Friday night with the little uh, Waco Connolly China Spring action. I actually think that's a really good game. Oh, it's going to be because China Springs a fantastic program, state oh. champion last year. And they, and they're going to sling the ball around a bit. They got Cash McCall pulling the trigger. Uh, they they got some talent um, on, on both sides of the ball, and um, you know they're always a top program, as you mentioned. And then Kobe Black, uh, you know, I, I look forward to seeing him get tested a little bit. He's uh he's had a few big plays over the last uh, few weeks, but uh, him and his teammate, I mean, shoot, I. They they've got they've got some dudes out there as well uh, beyond beyond Kobe. So I got a feeling we're going to see uh, some really good football on Friday night and uh, two uh, two teams very familiar with each other uh, going toe to toe and uh, it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun down there. Well, I should say our intern Walker will be in Dallas on Friday night as well. I think he's seeing Parish Episcopal against. South Oak Cliff. South Oak Cliff. And so yeah. I got I got a feeling it it may be. Uh, we may be talking about an 0-4 finish or 0-4 start for uh, South Oak Cliff. Wow, Parish uh, Episcopal has been really good this year. Yeah, Javon Thomas hasn't played so far. He's been out with an injury, uh, but uh, could see him back real soon. But I don't, I don't think it's going to happen this week. And uh, and um, yeah, Parish Episcopal's got some guys. Um, they've got Daniel Demery's had a great year so far. Well, and then they got uh, a linebacker that's pretty highly recruited. Um, and uh, they've got Caleb Mitchell Irving, um, and uh, their quarterback may be – he's up there with anybody in the in the class in 2025. Uh, uh, Sawyer Anderson yeah. is – he can throw it, man. He's a good one. Well, on Thursday, I will be uh, at Legacy Stadium there in Katy again to see Katie Pato take on Katie Made Creek. Uh, obviously, Pato's loaded on the defensive side of the ball. DJ Hicks, a and commit Damian Sanford. Mm-hmm. 25, 2025 offered, Dejon Petaway, uh, Jara Anderson, Alex Kilgore, uh, C.J. Johnson, <laughs> uh, Cortez Hunter. I mean, that Katie Pato defense is loaded with dudes. Uh, Who and aren't I, you watching? <laughs> yeah. And then uh, and, and Maid Creek's got some young kids. Coach Jensen there yeah. at Maid Creek. Uh, they got some they 25s got some that are really impressive. Uh, Tayshawn Wilson, uh, 23 corner, committed to Baylor. Uh, but they've got a 25 safety that I'm really interested to get my eyes on because he's starting to create a little bit of buzz there. In Greater Houston. Then on Friday, going a little bit south of Sealy to East Bernard. It'll be my first trip to East Bernard, uh, going down there to see Shiner come up and play and AM commit Dalton Brooks, who's been fantastic and been Mr. Everything. And really a Houdini act last was it last week or the week before to pull out the win in overtime for Shiner. Mm-hmm. Just an incredible two point conversion. If you can go online uh, and find a clip of that play, he's he's just been as needed and and as advertised for the Comanches there in Shiner. So that's our week two or not week two, our week one of the <laughs> district docket. I think we're in week four well, of the season now. Uh, I've been still got a few stragglers in non-conference play, but yeah, every, yeah. Um, a lot of, a lot of getting back into it. Um, so well, should be, Jason, be careful on the road. We're looking forward to seeing yeah. you in college station this weekend uh, as A&M hosts Miami and a ton of visitors coming in town for that. Uh, but for the rest of you, Uh, be safe on the road traveling to your Texas high school football games and we'll be right back uh, here next week to sit down and get everything previewed for you uh, for week five for Jason Howell I'm Ryan Bronger thanks for tuning in to the Texas high school football show